This time on Pedalbox, we're actually using some of the original parts that we got with the kit car four and a bit years ago, and reusing some of the aluminium panels to surround in the cabin. That's right, after taking parts off this chassis and replacing them for four and a bit years now, we're actually putting something on that came with the car that we bought on eBay. So this would be the first time you've seen a lot of these panels, pretty much since episode one or episode two, whichever one it was, we put them all on the chassis on the picnic bench in the back garden. And these panels are all nice, lightweight aluminium. Now this one's been cut down, but it used to go right the way from this point at the back here, right in front of where the suspension mounts were, all the way forward to this pillar. And we were sitting for a while thinking how we were going to enclose the side of the car and whether or not we were going to have an opening at the bottom to be able to use this for storage when we're traveling places. Now we don't necessarily want to carry things around when we're on track in this, in this spot. We haven't got a spare wheel or anything like that that would fit in, or a spare wheel at all for that matter, but we want some way to stop anything we put into this section from flying out and knocking into our feet or standing on it when we're getting in and out of the car. So we need something to go on the edge. So that's where these panels come back in. They are aluminium, they're lightweight, and crucially, they're already cut to fit. And all of the modifications that we've done to the car so far actually don't make them completely useless. They still work, they still fit, we just need to make a couple of adjustments to it. Now you can see on this one, I have started cutting out a couple of bits, but basically this started in roughly this configuration. Now you can see the panel here has a 180 degree return on it, and that's to hook over the top of the framework. So this piece would originally go on that way up, this would tuck underneath the bottom of the chassis where we now have our floor, and this part would sit over the top of this rail, which we still have. So you can actually see some of the holes on some of these panels are still in where they would have gone and bolted through onto the chassis. But a lot of the uh, pop rivets are still in where it would have been attached on the inside, again lining up with a bunch of the holes that we haven't yet closed up because we weren't sure if we were going to need them to run cables or wires or anything else. So we'll just ignore this panel. This goes from here all the way back, and we've chopped that off from the front section. Now, we spent quite a bit of time making sure that this was going to fit properly and cutting reliefs to, to fit around all of the structure that we've added. So at this end, you can see there is a notch, and this goes around all of the uh, structure that comes up alongside the edge of this panel, and actually holds up this trunk when it's not attached to the end. And across the top here, we have a cutout, which is for the heater uh, hose clamp, effectively. This, uh, this, this clamp that sits on the side and holds these hoses in place. Now there is a little bit of me that's very, very tempted to change these two pipes out and make them hard lines to go around and down, and we just use a little bit of this between the two hard line connections. Obviously we've got one that runs to the back already, so we could use those in there. And I am sort of tempted to still do that, I'm just not 100% sure. I might even just fit those in later this episode, but we'll see. For now, we're going to get on with fitting these. Now the other release that's on this is cut out of the front, and this just fits in like this. So that's how the panel attaches onto the car, and we're, again, we're just going to pop rivet in, probably through the outside rather than the inside, and tidy up this edge, because it's currently just a little bit bigger where it would have wrapped over the top. So we're going to trim this edge back a little bit before we can firmly fix it in, and we can pop rivet the bottom in as well, again, from this side rather than in, from inside the cabin, because I think it'll look a little bit better. The other side is in, again it was fairly simple to do, just like this one, trim the inside edge off, and instead of this cut out for the um, heater pipes, it actually has one further back to go around for the mount that the fuse box has, which bolts onto the same top rail of the chassis. So now the front half of this panel has been cut off, taking care of, and is now fit onto the chassis. We need to deal with the back half, and this is a difficult one because this panel, as it is, will not fit through the gap in the chassis. And even if it fit through the gap in the top of the chassis, if we ever needed to remove it, we wouldn't be able to because we're going to have to take it out through the floor once all the rest of the panels are welded on. So this doesn't work. 
Now you can see it's been pre-drilled once upon a time so that it would just be pop over and straight onto the chassis, but it actually has all the lines drawn on for where the cross braces are, obviously to drill the holes to pop rivet it. Now what I've done with the other one of these is slice down these lines to make it into three pieces. And here's one I prepared earlier. So the three pieces, this one goes on the driver's side, this is obviously the passenger side, just reversed, but this has a cutout to go around the intercooler mount at the back and part of the um, trailing arm mount, and also some cutouts at the bottom and on this one to go around the floor superstructure so it all fits in nicely. Then this panel sits in the V across the top, it goes underneath the uh, last remaining part of the upper superstructure as it comes down where you basically slide in and sit across to go in, so this will be pop riveted across the top. This is probably going to end up being just bonded in or just have a little um, panel attached to it like some tabs across the top of these because obviously this no longer fits. It's not the same size as this anymore. It's, it's smaller because we've cut pieces off. So we can't quite get an overlap for these panels to hold these ones in. But I don't think that's going to be a problem. We can just silicon it in, RTV it, and it will all fit nicely. So let's go and put these on the other side of the car and then we can cut this one down. And that's all of the interior cockpit panels done and assembled onto the car. Now while we've got all the aluminium out, we're going to do a little bit more work on our front wheel latches. We've got a new support brace to put in the back here, and this is going to go from the top tube or top rail of the chassis out to our new wings. We're going to top, chop all of the excess material off of here and put a nice big plate over the top of wheel latch. It's going to come up the back, across the top, and then we'll figure out the front another time. Now before we put the top in, we do also have to put in our new drop links that we've made up. We've realised the geometry in here is really not very good under compression. We've got the back of the car jacked up, so the front squatting a bit and everything looks very, very unhappy. So we've made up a couple of new drop links. We're going to throw those on and then we can skin everything up. Now the last thing we want to do before we stick a cover on the top of the wheel latch here and button everything up, just while we've got access, is put in those new drop links that I mentioned earlier. The original factory drop links fit on this way around. And unfortunately, although they were kind of okay with the original anti-roll bar placement, when we moved the arb back to clear our new fan duct, they ended up leaning back way, way too far. And unfortunately, the pin here wants to be directly out forward, so we're putting a huge amount of stress through this little rubber joint, and we're pretty sure it wouldn't cope with how far back it would have to go under compression. So, a while ago, Aid made up a little sort of dimensional test just to try and make sure that we had all of the offsets right for a static one. This wouldn't work in the real world because it has to lean back as the, as the suspension compresses. But in terms of figuring out like the length of it and everything it needed to be, this was great. So this has been sat here for about 18 months until we could finally make a proper one. Now the idea was we're going to have something like this that bolts onto the anti-roll bar here and we'd have a heim joint on the bottom that would fit onto our upper arm. The problem is we might have miscounted what heim joints we had. We thought we had the 10 mil heim joints that we needed to fit on there. All we've got is 12s, so we're a little bit screwed for now. But the idea was supposed to be, and this is another dimensional test, but we we're going to build basically this with a heim joint in the bottom, and then it would be able to bend back on that pin to track the arb as, it, as the uh, suspension compresses, because the arb kind of does this, which means that our link has to be able to move back and reach back to catch it. So now that we've got our dimensional test piece done, so we know this is all the right dimensions, it's all the right shapes, we can build this off the car when we get our right heim joint in, which means we can carry on plating the whole thing up anyway. Behold the box in which I keep my rivets and see that it is empty. We ran out of rivets, so we can't actually attach all of the remaining panels onto the front of the car. We've scavenged a bunch of metal from more of the side pieces. It's been a very heavy recycling episode, really, putting all these bits in. And then we scavenged bits from other panels we got with the chassis in order to build up the rest of the front of the arch. Yep, the front edges of the wheel arches at the minute are recovered from the old transmission tunnel surrounds, which I think yeah. is quite a neat piece of, uh, yes. of recycling. Saved us throwing something away. Yeah, I nearly sold them about 
nine, ten months ago to somebody on one of the kit car groups and they sat in the back of the shed. They never got back to me. I didn't really chase it up and they've just been there and we were running low on aluminium and went, I know where there's loads of aluminium. We've just recycled a bunch and there's so much, so much more, more we haven't actually got a use for. Yep. So yeah, that's now being recycled nicely. So yes, we are good for the planet, maybe? Kind of. Well, it's strong. a lightweight car, isn't ah, it? It's very yes. environmentally friendly. Yes, good um, mileage. Mm. We yeah. do have a bunch more pieces of metal ready to go into the wheel arches, yeah. but obviously without rivets, we're a little bit screwed. Yeah. And if you'd like to help us buy more rivets, you can buy merch from shop.pedalbox.show, none of which we're wearing at the moment. Go As go usual. Us. Yep. Uh, we've got caps, beanies, um, t-shirts, both long sleeve and short sleeve, much like this. Again, not one of these. Um, and hoodies as well, because the English summer is terrible. We will inevitably need those still. You can also jump on patreon.com forward slash pedal box show. You can support us there anything from a dollar a month up. If you support us at $5 or more, you get access to our Discord server, yep. which right You've now... You've got loads of stuff in. <laughs> right now, the Discord <laughs> server is mostly me making noise about how little noise the FD1's going to have in yes. it, because I have lots of soundproofing going in there right now. Yeah, and that is something we're going to be putting on this soon. We've only had the Dynamax since before Christmas, because I was just going to throw it in over Christmas and didn't. Um, but we need to quieten this down, because whilst we're trying to get rid of some of the little dents and ripples and knocks and things in the panels it rings and like rattles bell. horribly it is literally like a bell and as much as our sanity is questionable anyway our neighbors probably want to retain theirs as best as they can so we need to put some dynamite in this once we've got the panels really squared away but some of them like the firewall are good to go so we'll be getting that done soon as well and you will be able to check that out in a future episode so long as you hit the bell you'll get notified about it and if you have done all of those things already thanks very much we'll see you next time <laughs>